Welcome back. More bad news for people trying to get on the property ladder. House prices are almost back to their pre-crash peaks of 2007. It's crazy, isn't it? That's according to, to a new report by the Institute of Professional Auctioneers and Valuers, the first of its kind from this part of the construction industry, which paints a grim picture for potential home buyers in most parts of the country. And with us to explain the details of the findings, Pat Davitt, Chief Executive of the IPAV. Good morning to you, Pat. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Simon. We touched on it earlier on when we were going through the papers, and yep. it, it's wound up on the front page of the Sunday Indo today. Yes. Uh, unsurprising because um, it's shocking to think that we could end up back in that same bubble and that's where, where we're almost at. Well, I suppose in some parts of Dublin and in some, some, some particular parts of Dublin, we're ending up back where prices are practically in, as, as in 2007, uh, which were high and very high at the time. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, it's only a few very small parts. And I suppose in some, in, if you drill down into the figures that you look at the report or the pro, pro, if you look at the barometer, you would see that those particular parts, like they're very, very specific. And if you, if you uh, we've tried in this report to bring a whole country uh, look at property values. So you're giving us a picture of Ireland, a snapshot, county by county. We're giving you a snapshot of county by county and their actual sale prices because we have about 1,100 members. The Institute has about 1,100 members throughout the country. So we're giving you a, sale, a snapshot of sales that have happened. Okay. So like these reports, or this report is, is, is as close to being up to date on prices as they are at the moment of the whole country as possible. And importantly, it's not market value, it's the actual price they it's sold for. It's the actual price these you properties sold for. interesting point, Pat, before we came in and we were chatting about it and you were saying about percentage increases. Yeah. And that, I thought it was a very interesting point that you said that, you know, a 20% increase in a certain part of the country wouldn't amount to a whole hill of beans, but a 20% increase in, say, the south of Dublin, you're into serious figures. Well, what we've sort of tried to do is we've looked at three different things in this report. First of all, we looked at the whole Ireland report, including Northern Ireland, and we have some counties in Northern Ireland in it, and we intend, as according as these reports come out on a six-monthly basis, we intend to be looking right across Ireland at the six counties, so 32-county Ireland we intend to be looking at. Obviously, there are prices that agents have got for property. And the third part, which is, which is very important in some areas, is the square metre price. Mm. We don't really have square metre prices. Our price, properties in Ireland aren't sold on square metre prices. Really, mm. people don't look at them, but it's very important when you look at them. Like I'm looking at, uh, when you drill down to the figures, I'm looking at one particular property in Dundrum, which was sold in 2007, uh, and the price of it was somewhere in the region of uh, uh, it was uh, 740,000 euros for a three-bedroom uh, semi. Now, in 2000, and 2017, right today, a three-bedroom semi there recently was sold for 800,000. Now, if you looked at those two figures, you'd say, well, one is way above the other. But in actual fact, one of those houses is 120 square metres and the other is 135 square metres. Mm. So there's 15 square right. metres of a difference, yeah, yeah. which is the size of one bedroom. But when you put like would like and you, and you look at the square, f f the square metre prices, yes, like yeah. we're about, that particular property is about 5% less than it was in 2007. And in those areas, property prices there have nowhere to go only up because there's very little stock being built in those areas. So those prices are going to continue going on and they will pass the 2007 prices. There's no doubt about because it. Because the demand very, is there. That's a very interesting point, actually, because you'll see that particularly in the, in the, in the US, they, they quote on square metre footage. Mm -hmm. You know, particularly in New York, they'll say X amount will cost you in Manhattan or whatever. You, are we trying to get, get to that here? Well, I think it's going to be good to get to it for people to realise because, like you, as we were talking about earlier on, when if you see the property price in Sligo, as we saw a big heading in the paper one day, gone up by 30%, or in Longford, gone up by 30%. But like you're looking at the average price of a three bedroom semi in Longford at 80,000 euros. Mm. So, so if you're it goes coming up, off a low base. If there. it goes up by 30%, and that's the whole lot of Longford, so that mm. could be taken all in different areas in Longford. So if you look, take 30% off that, like 30% on it seems like heading in the paper, price, a property price up by 30%. Like, you know, and it's really nothing because if, if, if again, if you look at the, if you dig into the report and you look at Kilkenny, for instance, the average price, Kilkenny is a city as well as a county, but we've taken the average price for the whole of the county and city together. A four bedroom semi in Kilkenny is in the region of 235,000, where in Dublin 4 it's nearly 1 million. So it's six times more expensive in Dublin 4 than it is in Kilkenny County and City. Let's have a look, Pat, at the list, the findings ultimately of, of your study. So the most expensive areas, maybe talk us through those, unsurprisingly Dublin 4 at the very top of the list. Well, Dublin 4 is the most expensive and the, and the, and the price per square metre there is, is almost €6,000 per square metre, which is a big price per square metre for, that, for, that, for properties so there. So that 883000 uh, is... 
the average sale of a property. It's the average sale of a Dublin property four. and Dublin Four. And like you know, it's not taken and it's not going into particular areas. We didn't like you could pick out different areas and you could say in Dublin Four there's an area that the prices are down, mm -hmm. there's an area that the prices are up. So what we're trying to do is look at averages across the whole of Dublin Four to see where we are. And we're really trying to get to a point where we're going to have a property barometer, that there'll be an IPAV property barometer every six months. We're going to this this particular one because it's the first one we've looked at three different sorts of properties. We've looked at a two bedroom apartment, three bedroom semi and a four bedroom semi, which are mostly the most common sort of properties right throughout the uh, if you look at right throughout the, the, the sphere of properties. So what we've tried to do is we've, we're trying to make a barometer off it that we show the average price right throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Now we've done a barometer on this particular occasion uh, on the report we've done a barometer of the three different sorts of properties. But as corn as this report goes on we'll have a barometer just all in the one. So we'll be able to look at Ireland, we'll be able to say this is the property price barometer and it's whatever the average price is. And then the next six months we just look at it, it's gone up or gone down or gone wherever it is. Yeah, it's our benchmark, I suppose. Benchmark, Simon yeah. pointed out earlier on when we were chatting about this, all south side locations on that list. All south side locations are on it and they're, and they're all expensive. Uh, and there's, there's, they're probably, the, they are the most expensive, not probably at all, but they are the most expensive. Mm. And it's for no reason, obviously, then there's very little properties being built there. And the builders that are building in Dublin mostly are some of the bigger builders. Mm -hmm. They have sites open and they're building because they have money to build them. But the smaller builders are still back in the market building. So hence the prices are going to stay and they're going to stay increasing because the only way the prices are going to go down is more stock coming on the market. It's supply and demand. Mm -hmm. If there's little supply, as you know, if you're selling two oranges and you only have got two, you're going to get a lot of money yeah. for them. Of but course, if you and have there's no competition no either. Competition. It's your only option as a buyer. Let's um, look at the other end of it. Yeah, the uh, least expensive expensive areas in the country, Pat. Um, Longford coming out at 87,000, just over 87,000 euros, Sligo, Tipperary, Cavan and Leitrim. Yeah. If you look at Longford, Longford is, the price per square metre in Longford is about 900, less than 1,000 square meters, uh, euros per square metre. And again, if you compare that, and this is what people really should be doing, if you mm. compare this to Dublin price in Dublin 4, like you're looking at six times the price. Mm. Like it, this, this, these, these prices are, are really, Dublin is motoring ahead and it's going ahead and the rest of the country is really falling behind. So that if you look at somebody trying to build a new house in Longford, for instance, you can buy an average three-bedroom semi for 80, 85,000, 90,000. And a new house is going to cost you, probably to build it, it's going to cost you somewhere in the region of 200, 220, 250. So when are new houses going to be built in these towns like Longford and mm. uh, Athlone, Mullingar, Sligo, these places, they're, they're not going to be built because builders can't afford to build them at that levels. Mm. And if they can't afford to build them, we're going to be looking at the same stock checking hands, the second-hand properties selling and selling again and selling again and even on the property price register when we look at the amount of properties that have been sold in Ireland is about 40,000 properties now we have 2.2 million households so like the average price the average properties should be changing hands should be somewhere in the region of 100,000 properties so people like you and me and anybody else if we want to buy a new house we should be able to go and buy a new house if we want to buy a second house we should be able to go and buy a second house if we want to rent them we should be able to go and rent them but what's happening at the moment is that stock isn't there and mostly 50% of everything is nearly in Dublin. So mm -hmm. if you look at 50% of the population, 50% of everything. Mm -hmm. So if you take that, if with that amount of population in Dublin, wages are higher, uh, jobs are more available, good jobs are more available. So people obviously are coming to Dublin it's that to work. brain drain, isn't it? Brain drain. And they can afford to pay more money for them. And that's yeah, what the, they're doing. Yeah, but on the flip side, the cost of living is more expensive. Mm. It, well, it is more expensive. And it's and probably that starts up buying a house. Yes, <laughs> and it's more expensive to buy a house in it as well because this land prices are more yeah. expensive. But the cost of building in Dublin, Simon, should be the very same as what it is in yep. Donegal or what it is in Longford or what it is any place else. If you look at uh, uh, in, the, in the figures, I came across one particular property in Athlone or a two-bedroom apartment. So if you look, a two-bedroom apartment in 2007 in that loan was 350-odd thousand in 2007. In 2012, that property price had fallen to 90 to 100,000. And today, 2017, that price has grown to 130,000. Mm. But you're still, it's only 25% of what it was in what 2007. Was yeah. So the price in the country have fallen hugely, haven't recovered near as much as what they have in Dublin. Mm. Price in Dublin have recovered, and in some areas they've recovered more. And there's no harm for prices, I don't think, to pass on the price. Like, I know we all have but this thing in our head. As you say, Pat, the great thing with this report is that, and, the, and future reports, is that we'll be able to keep an eye on, on Exactly, a there's a benchmark place. there now. Yeah. All of the details in the Sunday Indo today. All of the details are in the Sunday Indo Independent yes. today, and we have it, obviously, we, I, I have the report and we'll be sending it out Brilliant. as well, and it's great. Pat Tavert, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for coming in, Pat.